are now joined by Jessica Cameron and Brian Ledford, um, Ledford, also known as Ginger Assassin and Mucky Muck of the arch rival roller coaster. That's Ginger. How are you? I'm Mucky. Fair enough, though. Okay. Everybody has cool, cool names. Yes. Tell us about your name, Ginger Assassin. Um, actually, my mom and my son picked it out. They happened <laughs> to be seeing the um, Puss in Boots movie from Shrek, <laughs> right. and um, they said, "Bring in the Ginger Assassin." And they're <laughs> like, awesome. "We've got your name," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and Mucky Muck, you're an announcer for yeah, the arch absolutely. Rival Been Girls. doing it since uh, 2009. Love the action. I was. Just a fan of, yeah. the, of the Art Travel Roller Girls before I made the transition over to an announcer. And I got involved with Roller Derby because it gave me something different to watch right. in St. Louis. Right. You know, uh, Major League Sports probably weren't playing at their very best at the time. So here was something new, exciting, um, a physical sport. Beauty on the flat track, mm -hmm. drama, strategy, everything that a sports fan was looking for. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now tell us about how you got involved as, as announcing and what is the difference from the from roller derby in the past sure. to roller derby I guess I, I guess the big difference between roller derby from past, what people might be predisposed to, you know, if they watched it historically in the 70s, 80s, and 90s compared to what it is today, basically it's now on a flat track. You know, there are still banked leagues that were predominant, you know, in the uh, 70s and 80s. Um, now it's all played on a flat surface. That's the big difference. Um, as far as uh, how things have progressed in the sport here in St. Louis, mm -hmm. it's been very active. We started, as we mentioned in the last segment, since uh, 2006. We're now in our seventh season, That's and we right. have playoffs right around the corner this okay. Saturday night, as a matter of fact. I mean, we set in tone uh, what the whole 2014 postseason is going to look like with uh, two big bouts this weekend That's in Queen great. Park. Mm -hmm. Ginger, the, I was going to talk to you about that. What position do you play? Um, I mostly block. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of offense and defense. And what do you find is most interesting about uh, the sport itself? Um, I would have to say that you have to think quick. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on at once. And um, for a newcomer, it can be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But I love it. It's so challenging. And you really have to be quick on your feet and, and do the best you can do. Now, it's grown a lot here in St. Louis. You guys have the playoffs. Tell us about the playoffs, who's in the playoffs, and then what does that lead to? Okay, so this Saturday mm -hmm. at Queenie Park, we have um, two bouts. We'll be opening with um, the Stunt Devils and the Smashinistas playing. Mm -hmm. They are currently the second and third seed mm -hmm. of, the, of this um, current season. And then um, the following bout will feature my team, the M80s, um, playing against They're the tops. <laughs> you can tell everybody. Uh, against RSA, yeah. So um, we were undefeated this season, and we'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> we want to go into um, next month's bout at Shea Fitz, uh, playing for first. Right. You know, we were undefeated there, and we'd like to keep it that way. At the Shea Fitz Arena, that's a big deal. Yes, absolutely. Year. It is. That's very, great. very big deal. It's going to be the second time that uh, we've been there. We uh, mm -hmm. last played at Shea Fitz Arena in 2012. It was the first time that uh, we ever had a regulated bout here in the city of St. Louis. Uh, Mayor Francis Slay even uh, coined the day uh, Arch Rival Rural Girls Day in that's the city awesome. of St. Louis. So we're looking forward to it again. And as we said, that's coming up in March. But Two teams make the final big battle in March. They got to win this Saturday, right. and it's going to be a very competitive night of doubleheader uh, derby action. I was doing a little bit of research mm -hmm. uh, before we started. Um, the last four local seasons, we've had four different teams win the championships. Oh, that's great. 2010 was the Stunt Devils, yeah. 2011 was RSA and their inaugural campaign. Mm -hmm. 2012, the M80s, yep. and then last year, Smash and Eastas. So right. somebody is going to win it twice within the span of five years when it's all said and done in right. a couple of months. Now, we were talking about high-scoring um, mm -hmm. games, the last segment. Is that, is that, it seems like there's a lot of action going on. How do you, as an announcer, keep up with all the it's action? It's very that's hard going because on. when you think about it with announcing, <laughs> it's a little different because you're not just saying, oh, this player's coming up exactly. to the plate or uh, this goal was made by this hockey player. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody kind of understands what the rules are in hockey and football and baseball. As an announcer, you're perpetually talking for almost three hours straight educating mm -hmm. the fans letting them know who's out there on the flat track who's scoring how they're scoring discussing strategies so as you can tell I'm a bit of a motor mouth just to begin <laughs> with already so it's it's keeping the fans engaged uh, educating them about the sport but also throwing in a little PT Barnum as yeah. well to keep them engaged so. Ginger tell us uh, what would you tell to say to new fans to get them come out and watch you guys um, it's really I, don't, I don't I mean for me to play it's an amazing feeling and to have new fans there to share it with and if they have any questions I love sharing about the game and talking to them and letting them know what's going on and so 
They should come and try it. They might like it. Cool. Thank you guys for coming and sharing with us. Thanks you for guys don't us. want to miss this event. It's happening this weekend, February the 8th at 6.30 p.m. All the information is on your screen. Next up, we're taking it to the streets as we talk to John William Nagel about the upcoming street photography exhibition. We'll be right back.